So the fear is when you're taking things like human growth hormone or IGF-1 that you could potentially become insulin resistant. Now, when you're taking Sermorelin, you're basically forcing your body to produce more of its own GH and then downstream IGF-1. So we always check hemoglobin A1C to make sure that we're not gonna deal with any type of issues like insulin resistance. So if you look at the metabolic profile that we did before he started Sermorlin, his hemoglobin A1C was borderline. It was 5.9 with an estimated average glucose of 121. Since starting Sermorlin, surprisingly, it actually went down. So it went from 5.9 to 5.6, which is honestly, that's, that's great news. Now, how can we explain that? Because in theory, his insulin, he should be more insulin resistant, not less. But what we find is when somebody starts a medication like Sermorlin, they'll typically, they typically will get a little bit leaner, especially if they're eating towards their goals. They might put on a little more lean tissue. So maybe they're offsetting that potential insulin resistance by just getting healthier by losing body fat and aggregating more lean tissue. So it could be like an offsetting effect, but I can't say for sure. Again, because a lot of the studies on sermorelin are injectable sermorelin, and many of those studies are also done on children.